Okay, and welcome to the fourth episode of Life with a Y podcast. I'm streaming currently on Twitch, and you might hear my cat meowing because this is live. My big cat has become very, very needy because my little cat has been spayed. She's, she got spayed yesterday. She has a cone. She's essentially a vegetable. It's funny. Sat, Monday morning, she was a psycho going crazy, running around, jumping on everything, jumping on my kitchen sink and messing around with my sponges. And now she's essentially a vegetable because she's got the cone on, she's drugged, and she can't even move around. Here's a kitty update for you all. Every episode has a kitty update. But this is a special this is a special kitty update because it's a sad kitty. Look at this sad kitty. She's so sad. Sad in her cone. Oh no, she's so sad. Okay, I'm sorry, kitty. Go go back to your spot. Yeah. It's not a good week for for Nina. And now you can hear my big cat taking a dump. The best this is the best of having a live show. You have one cat going crazy while well, the same cat taking a dump. What can you do? But yeah, it's pretty, it was pretty crazy. Like I took her to get spayed and then when she got back, she's wearing this cone and then she can't even do anything. Like, like imagine there's a, cause her head is so tiny compared to the cone. It's difficult for her to even eat or drink water. So like, uh, it was a bit stressful for me, like how to make sure that she eats. And also yesterday she was like literally a potato. She was legitimately a vegetable. She wouldn't even move. She spent the whole time just like sleeping. And you might hear this grating sound during this episode because it's her licking the the uh, the cone. I've realized that what she does is she has this instinct to clean herself like but instead she just licks the cone. And she just keeps licking the cone. Oh, look at that, that ass of the Misha. You guys missed that. You guys missed Misha's booty walking away. Oh, he's playing by himself. So as I was saying, yeah, now that Nina's a vegetable, Misha's become like super energetic and gel and sad because he has no one to play with. Like usually Misha would be sleeping all day and then Nina would, would uh, uh, Misha would wake up Play with Nina for a bit. Oh, oh, oh. Play with Nina for a bit. And then go back to sleep. But now he's like annoying as frick and won't leave me alone and wants me to play with him even though he doesn't want to do anything. So that's my life right now. And when I got Nina back home, I was like, what do I do with her? How do I make sure she can eat and everything? So obviously you go to YouTube and I search feeding cat with cone or something like that and uh, I didn't expect to get such an unhinged video I turn on this video of this woman with her cat not a kitten but like a big cat a bigger cat I guess with a cone on and I'm like okay this is boring I'm gonna 1.5 exit she starts talking about the cone and whatever and then she starts going she starts going And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got I to gotta slow this down. Did I miss something here? What is she doing? I was like, what is going on? Why is she... I thought this was a video about cats and helping cats through, through their operations. What is going on? What is she doing? I find out it's some sort of EFT something. I don't remember what it's called. But it's like something to help you get through trauma, I think. So, sure, I mean, it was, it was very weird for me to see. But whatever helps you get through your traumas. I understand if your cat actually went through like a serious operation. That's like very hard on you. But I just found it. It was like a mind bender. I was just watching this video at 1.5 speed. All of a sudden, I just see her smacking her forehead. And I was like, what, what did I just turn on? What am I, what am I watching? And what, how does this have to do with cats? I was, I was just so confused. So yeah, 
that's my life right now. Nina is just weird. She's like a vegetable. She doesn't even walk around. I mean, she basically just sleeps the whole day because she gets drugged up. She gets drugged and then she sits around. But yeah, I also wanted to bring up, if you haven't already, you should subscribe to the YouTube. Let me show you. Let me show you my YouTube. My thumbnail game is on point. If you aren't subscribed to the YouTube, link is in my bio. Check out those thumbnails. God, look at that, beautiful. Look at that, I paid for TikTok views. I shaved my head for a prank. I got the same tattoo, oh sorry, getting the same tattoo as Machine Gun Kelly. You're telling me these are not 10 out of 10 clickbait uh, thumbnails? Please tell me. These are like the perfect thumbnails. This one, I shaved my head, people actually like, the funniest thing about this is that if you look at the analytics, a lot of the views are from people just typing in shaved head. People are trying to look for instructional, for instructions on how to shave their head. And instead they're going to my show, to my podcast and seeing this, like, it's so funny. So funny. So yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, then you should definitely do that. Because I'm going to be posting uh, videos there, not just podcast rips but like other things as well and my thumbnail game is on point honestly as a kid I learned photoshop but I didn't really have anything to use it for but now I'm using my my photoshop skills for the power of evil the power of clickbait clickbait is amazing to harness because you try to create the most like the the most insane unhinged thing for an image and then you just put it up. You just have to be unhinged. It's awesome. Bruh. So yeah, go check out my YouTube for some fun unhinged action. Bruh, 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 bruh. I see you, I see you speaking in the chat, bruh, bruh. Yeah, one thing I wanted to address is that I'm starting to open up to people in my real life. And then they when they add me on Instagram, you should follow me on Instagram if you're not. Papaisa, same name. They start to see that, uh, they start to see that uh, I'm not as shy in real life as I am online. And that's to do with like me being like more introverted. If I'm around someone I don't know, I don't open up as much. And so... People are, some people have noted to me that they're surprised when they see my, see me, see my videos because it's different, it's, it's different from what I am in, in those situations, like where I don't know people and I'm more reserved and awkward. And I, I realize I hate that about myself. The fact that people, that I'm such a baby when I don't know people, I'm such a meek little baby around people I don't know. And then afterwards, only when I'm open up to people, I'm more myself. Like I should just be myself straight up the straight off the bat. And I find it it's so embarrassing. That's why I find it so embarrassing when people I meet in real life see my TikTok videos because they see how unhinged I am. Well, I'm not. Un I don't say I'm unhinged, but I'm I'm goofy. Guys, if you're if your uh, dating profile has you doing this. Yeah, you're not you're not goofy. You're just a bit cringe. Yeah, so these people people in real life, this is how they see me. Huh? This is how I am in uh, in in real life in front of people. Uh, uh, hi, uh, uh that, that's a nice backpack. <laughs> my my mom said I couldn't have that backpack because it was too expensive. <laughs> Runs away, scurries off. What? Whereas you go and look at my videos and you just see beans, beans. 
Eat more beans to lose weight. No need for a fit tummy tea. Yeah, there's a big contrast, I guess, if, uh, if that's how I am in real life. And I go, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir, but, but, but. Could you, could you please speak to me? I beg of you. I'm but a lowly boy. I'm a lowly insecure boy. Where while online, I'm just going, I'm just, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm bald. I ain't bald. I don't got no Bezos dome. That's me online. Shaving my head. Pretending I'm bald to everyone. That's me online. That's the real me. Yo, I'm legit sitting here wondering, why does it still smell like cat poop? And then I look over and I see a piece of cat poop on the floor. I'm like, God damn it. I don't expect this from the big cat. I thought that the little cat, because he has a cone on his head, on her head. I don't expect that kind of stuff from the big boy. But yeah, my online persona, that's the real me. You know, like that Drake song? I don't remember the lyrics, but that's the real me. That's that's me. Excuse excuse me, sir. Could you could you could you pass that weight, please? Can you pass the extra weight, please? That's me at the gym. Whereas in real in uh, my real self, it goes, "Hey, you bald boy, give me that weight." No, I would never call someone bald boy. I would just call myself bald boy. Or uh, Bezos Dome Head. That's what I call myself. Or Five Head. That's what I call myself. Yeah, and the f it was just so embarrassing that two people told me that they were surprised by my videos considering how I am in real life. That's how I knew that I need to make a shift in my... This, that's how I knew I needed to make a shift in my life and to stop being such a little baby boy baby bitch boy and I needed to start being more myself around people I don't know otherwise my first impression is that I'm a little baby bitch boy is some of this going on TikTok of course man caster you haven't been checking my TikTok recently that's how I know every single clip of this like podcast has been going on TikTok i just been cutting up these uh, YouTube videos into like five TikToks. I'm milking it. This is my new content generation. Skits are too much work. Now I'm just going to do skits sitting in front of my computer staring at the screen. These are my skits now. I have a, I have a good skit from the stream. Or I, ho I hope it's good. I think it's good. Coming out tomorrow. And with this whole thought thinking about introverts, it made me start realizing that like I had plans on Friday and it made me think like, wouldn't it be nice for me to just sit at home and not go anywhere to just not have plans and just be at home by myself? That's like my toxic trait is that it's like, wouldn't it be nice to just do the same thing as usual? Wouldn't it be nice to just talk to nobody and do whatever you want? Yeah, that's my toxic trait, that I just want to be alone a lot of time. I just want to be introverted. It's like too much social interaction or getting out of my own routine is too much. Getting the same tattoo as Machine Gun Kelly. That's yeah, that's the title of my video. That is that is homie. Man, it's hard to uh, come up with topics for a one hour stream. I have like five topics and I'm like, no, I have like eight topics or nine and I'm through like half of them already and they're like nothing. They're like nothing topics. Okay, another, another scenario. You're at a fast food restaurant. What is it with... What is with fast food restaurants and these new like TV menu displays? Who thought this was a good idea? My brain cannot scan all the items fast enough. If I'm new to this place and I don't know the menu, 
it's like impossible for me to choose what I want because I look at it, I look at like a quarter of it and then it switches to some other dumb shit I don't care about. And then I have to wait like 30 seconds and then it goes back to what I want. I read another quarter, it switches. I can't, I can't scan it fast enough, man. And then it switches to like, goes from like food to dessert or drinks or something like, bruh, I cannot do it. Like, honestly, like Tim Hortons, you got to chill, man. You don't need to advance with technology. Just give me a paper display up there and I can know what I want. You guys change your menu like every week. I can't possibly know, keep up with what's going on all the time. I look at that shit. I look at it. And then 0.5 seconds later, it's something different. Like the text and the images and the descriptions are completely different. And then... And then you're on this pressure where the cashier is now like, yo, come up here and order. And you're like, uh, 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 I, I, I didn't even look at the menu yet, man. Give me, give me more time. Give me more time. That's been my experience, man. Tim Hortons, stop trying to advance with technology. Just stay. Just be prehistoric. Come on. Don't do this to me. Don't be like that to me. Have you guys experienced that? Let me know. I just be getting the bacon English muffin every time because I'm picky. You see, I don't order enough to know. I don't go to Tim's enough to know what they have. You know, like, I'm not going to get the artisanal grilled cheese. You know, like, guys, it's not a grilled cheese from Tim Hortons. It's the artisanal grilled cheese. Artisanal artisanal it's free real estate artisanal gr grilled cheese it's so artisanal that it it comes from tim hortons wow i have a pine from uh the my mini christmas tree still on this table i removed that on like the first week of january and it's still on my table that's a blast from the past you know what's funny about my cat too is that now that she has the cone she sleeps in the weirdest way. She either flops on her side or she literally sleeps just standing up. She's just like, she's just standing up straight, sleeping. She's like a mummy at this point. It's so weird. Next topic. This topic, you know, the way I come up with topics is just like, Anything that pops up in my mind throughout the week, I just put it in the dock. And then I try to think of some jokes about it. I think it's, a, it's a, the same approach I've been using to creating skits for videos. But this is even more like loose. This is super loose because I'm not really writing anything. Sometimes I'll, I'll think of a bit like in the second podcast, I had this whole thing I wrote about like white rapper syndrome. So you should go check it out and I'll have a clip on it tomorrow. No, I don't know about tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow. So I have to do some editing. But white rapper syndrome, that was like, that was something I wrote. That was fun. But this next one is, I just saw a tweet by someone about vaping. And then I thought, oh, I should talk about this. Someone, I saw someone tweet something like, I'm going back to cigarettes because it's too hard to quit vaping but I will go back to cigarettes and then I will try to quit cigarettes. Isn't that insane? Like, I remember there was this... Oh, look at Misha's going to start meowing like crazy. There was this whole notion that if you start vaping, vaping will help you quit smoking. What a lie that was. It was like these vape companies propagandized everyone so hard that people believe that if you vape it'll help you somehow like okay you it helps you quit smoking but then it makes you addicted to vaping so like i don't i didn't that didn't make any sense so like you you went from being addicted to smoking which you could only do when you're outside and then you became addicted to vaping, which you could literally like sneak and do anywhere. 
So you went from uh, your probably one pack a day to like five packs a day equivalent of vaping. Isn't that insane? And honestly, vape, com- vape companies are legitimately... Everyone who works at a vape company, vape company, everyone who works at a vape company is going to hell. There's no doubt about it. Same with cigarette companies. If you work, well, back in the day when you were marketing it towards kids and stuff, if you were at a vape company and you were marketing it to kids, you're going to hell. Even if you don't believe in religion, you're going to hell. Honestly, the most truly evil companies in the world to make children addicted to vaping, that's absolutely insane. How could anyone think that's a morally good idea? Like last fu- last week, I was making fun of Drake because he was promoting Stake, an online gambling casino. But like, I wasn't really following influencers back in the day, but if there were influencers promoting vaping, then those are like the real devils. Like Drake is whatever, that is insane. Not only are you addicted to nicotine, you're also addicted to sugar now because sugar is really addictive. And if people are smoking or taking vapes, now they're addicted to the sugar as well. Double the addiction, twice the twice it. And I remember I have a friend who told So I have a friend whose brother worked at a vape company and we would always make jokes that he was like on the playground trying to sell kids vapes. It's like Hey kid, hey kid, I'll sell you this jewel pot for your for your Charizard. No, no, but that's my hollow, that's my, no, but that's my only hollow. You want your, you want your fix, don't you? You want your, you want your daily nicotine intake, don't you, Timmy? Come here, Timmy, give me your Charizard. No, 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 please. I need my nicotine, but I can't get rid of my Charizard. Give me your Charizard, Timmy. That's that's how I see vape salesmen. They're sitting on the playgrounds, sleuthing for the most vulnerable kid and creating an empire, an empire of addicts. You know, it's like an MLM on the playground. The playground is like there's a 5% kickback for every kid you get hooked to vapes. And that's what these vape companies were doing. This is all speculation, okay? This is all me making jokes, okay? I don't know what the hell was going on. I was not a kid at that time. Maybe you can tell me. How how were vapes infesting your school? Vaping infesting your school? Because I was in university when vaping began. And I had no interest. Because I saw it as nicotine. And I was like, hell no. Hello, fellow kids. Hello, fellow kids. Would you like some nicotine? It's like the devil is on your playground. He's got he's got a trench coat. Opens it up with some Doritos, some Smarties, some Skittles, and some Jewel Pods. And you know, you gotta get one of each, especially for the convenience factor. The convenience factor of it is, he's coming to you. He's coming to you and providing you with the service. And these kids, they're being swindled by the devil, the vape salesman. I cannot, I cannot wait until the day that we have a documentary or something about vaping. Like Netflix invests in some crazy documentary about vaping. It'll be amazing. It's going to be so interesting to see like the demons behind it. And how like all the research that they were using or whatever was completely wrong. <gasps> oh no, I have hiccups. All the research that they were using was completely fabricated and used to sell vapes. I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Man, I have like no topics for today. Oh my god, I have hiccups. Hold up. I need to get rid of these. Hopefully, they're gone. I hope these hiccups are gone. Hey, let me know if you hear any like poop, 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 poop. I'm trying to see if my pop filter pop, 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 
pop, pop, pop, pop, pop, pop filter, pop. I'm trying, I'm trying to see. I mean, pop, pop. I mean, I know my pop filter works, but I don't know where I should put my mic anymore. So let me know if the audio is terrible. Terra pull. Principal prickly. Principal prickly. Pricked a pickled pickle pear. That probably sounded terrible. Yeah, my last topic is. So in the past podcast, it was basically just a movie review of all the movies I watched or shows I watched. But I haven't really been watching much at all recently. But I will mention I finally finished Black Widow. Over the winter break, I rewatched a lot of Marvel movies. All the new Spider-Mans, plus the the Amazing Spider-Man. And then I also watched from, I think, Doctor Strange onward. Like Doctor Strange, and then all the rest of the Marvel movies after Doctor Strange. Except, I think, Marvel Civil War, because it was too boring. So, I mean, I watched all of them, you know. I even watched Shang-Chi. I watched... Eternals which was on Disney Plus and then I watched I even watched Black I started watching Black Widow Black Widow was my last one I started watching it it was so boring I couldn't get through it it's one of those movies where I watched it like it was like a YouTube video where I watched 10 minutes of it got so bored of it gave up for like a day went back to it gave up on it went back on it for a week so my record now is the last time I watched it was like probably like a month ago. And I think yesterday or the day before, I finally finished it. I finally finished Black Widow. And I will tell you why I have so many problems with it. First of all, it's pretty mediocre. You can tell a lot of his... You can, I have such a problem with Marvel. Everything is so obviously green screen. It's so obvious at this point. And it doesn't look good. And I'm Russian... So I have a problem whenever I see people doing fake Russian accents. I find it so cringe. Like when, what's her name? Is her name Florence Pugh? I think that's her name. When she's doing her Russian accent, it's so cringe. It's so cringe to me. The others were okay, I guess. Like the dad and the mom were okay, I guess. And why doesn't Scarlett Johansson have a Russian accent? And then when you hear them trying to speak russian it's so bad like i think scarlet is like ukrainian so i kind of thought she would be able to speak russian but she was terrible and there's always that moment where they're at like a russian base and then the guards are russian and they say something to them and then they just choose to respond in english like that kind of breaks the immersion you know it breaks the immersion Because it makes you realize that, oh, 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 yeah, this is a movie. Right, right, right. This is a movie. And I felt like there were so many... The movie was like such a... So it's just... It's just not that good. It's not as good as other Marvel movies. The villain is like not very well realized. The fighting is just whatever. The fighting is mediocre. Actually, I don't even remember anything. I don't know anything that happened. The story was so pointless. I didn't feel like I gave a shit about her at all. I don't think it really gave her that great of a story, like, great of a backstory. And also, I know Marvel movies have, like, this humor. Like, they're generally pretty funny. But this movie didn't feel like it was supposed to be a funny movie. Like, it shouldn't have had any comedy in it. It should have just been serious. But the acting, I mean, generally, I guess it was good. But it wasn't, like, so great that it made you feel like this is a serious drama and then there was always this like terrible russian accent making a joke and the joke was just bad it was just it was just not good honestly i didn't uh, i don't know i think it's like my, the i don't know if it's worse than thor one and two because those are general those are seriously terrible because they're so boring i would say it's as bad as venom but like this movie probably had a way bigger budget than venom but i would say it's as bad as venom and Venom was like a steaming pile of shit. There was some funny moment. 
The thing is, I wanted to comment more about the movie, but I don't remember anything because I watched it over so such a long time. I've watched the movie over four month span. I started watching it in like the second week of January. I finished it two days ago. That's crazy. There was so I can only comment on the end thirty minutes because that's what I watched recently. And what happened in those last like thirty minutes is there was one scene. So they're on like this base. That's like in the air. It's like an air base. Okay, no, that doesn't make sense. It's a base that is flying, like a military base that's flying in the air, like really high up. So what happens is, uh, what's her name? Black Widow. She like sets the thing on, explodes it or whatever, and then she jumps out of it. She literally jumps out of it with no parachute and no plan. And she somehow expects there to be a random like thing for her to grab on that's way down from where she jumped. I was like, what? What, is, what? what's the plan here? What's the plan here, lady? What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing there? Didn't make much sense to me. And then another part that I found insane is that the people they're fighting, the guard, there's guards, right? There's always guards. And the guards are literally falling from the base they're they're falling plunging to their death they are plunging to their death as this base explodes and yet they're still engaging with black widow and shooting her with their guns why why do you care so much are you like trying to be employee of the month you're literally gonna die in the next like two minutes you're falling from like the stratosphere you're gonna you're gonna they're going to fall and s flatten out like a pancake. And yet you're still engaging with the enemy. That's a level of commit commitment I never expected from an employee. Would you ever go out of your way to do more than the bare minimum? To do the absolute... Like the minimum amount required for anything like that? Like... You go above and beyond that you're so dedicated to your job, even to your death. Even to your death, you're dedicated to your job. Isn't that absolutely insane? These guards are crazy. That they're dedi that dedicated to their craft of guarding Russian uh, higher-ups. That they will actually continue to shoot Black Widow as they're falling to their death. Oh my god, like no one is that dedicated of a worker. There's no way. There's no way. Yo, J2K, thank you for sending likes on TikTok. Man, I'm like completely run out of topics. I feel like this is going to be a short episode. My last two episodes were kind of saved by random React content. Like, I spent 30 minutes reviewing the Machine Gun Kelly billboard article. And then the next week, I think I spent like 20 minutes looking at our place. So this time, I'm praying that we can find a lot of good content in uh, making fun of parasocial relationships and then making fun of, uh, whatchamacallit. Oh wait, I don't want this here. Making fun of Morbius. Morbius, Morbius. Morbius, Schmorbius, Calorbius, Forbius, Gorbius, Shorbius, Warbius, Sorbius. Doesn't Morbius just sound like it could be a a rap song? So I wanted to have a moment and laugh at this, at the way that stands and parasocial relationships are so funny. So this is this is a Snapchat, not Snapchat. This is a TikTok someone made where they're happy that this guy Slime played with another person from Dream SMP. If you don't know what that is, that's like a Minecraft YouTuber. And Minecraft YouTubers have some crazy rabid fans who are all children, but also very socially awkward. And then they are, um, they're very socially awkward and they believe that the people that they watch are like their friends. And then like conversation between people, conversations between these 
Minecraft YouTubers are like anything that they say that they these kids these pair these kids will analyze like it's really very interesting like I, if you're an online creator and all like you can just think of oh I'm just playing with my friend I'm just playing games with my friends but no because you post because you show this online and you streamed it people are going to analyze every single word that you say to that other person and scrutinize it for whether you were nice, you were, you were mean, you were empathetic, anything. It's insane. Like once you, I don't know. I hope no one analyzes every little word I say because that's going to be insane. I will not be happy about that. So like, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Got a cough there. So, okay. I want to describe another term, parasocial. So parasocial, we can look up the definition, but essentially it's when you think your friends, it's when you think you are friends with creators that you watch. Okay, let's see. What is a parasocial relationship? Parasocial, parasocial relationship is a one-sided relationship that a media user engages with a media persona. So like a streamer and then a viewer. Media users can form parasocial relationships with celebrities, live action fiction characters, social media influencers, animated characters, and any other figure they encounter through media from all social medias. So basically imagine you as a child, you believe that you're like best friends with with a uh, dream and like everyone there and they're all your friends and that if they say something mean to the, their other you get upset and you go on reddit and you complain about it okay so let's read this this guy slime played with this other played with his uh played with his uh dream played with this minecraft youtuber sapnap i don't know anything about him sapnap deserved a better team STFU, I've been waiting for slime, slime and Sapnap interactions for so long. So basically, this this uh, Minecraft kid was happy between this interaction. And this guy, Slime, is like... Slime is like a 30-year-old edgelord. So he's like, yeah, welcome Dream. Welcome Minecraft kids, but beware... So let's read the comments. This shit's insane because it's like OMG, the way they included him in conversations, like he's a normal person. Oh, wait, I didn't read the comments. Okay, wait, wait, wait. His team was so fun and did a really good job involving Sap in all the conversations. Yes, they all tried their hardest to make sure everyone was included and they didn't throw unnecessary shade to him because he's a Minecraft YouTuber. MCYT, Minecraft YouTuber. LMAO. Oh my god. This is what I mean. People are out there analyzing every conversation you have online between people. It's absurd. It's very, very... Okay, sorry. You guys couldn't see the whole thing. It's very, very absurd. It's truly, truly absurd. We live in a... We live in a society. For real, they're so sweet to him. And even if they didn't play the best in the tournament, everyone seemed like they had a lot of fun. Yes, exactly. That's what matters the most. What is this conversation? I mean, it's wholesome. And then people are saying, OMG, the way they included him in conversation, like he's a normal person. Yeah, I, it's clear that these are kids that don't have... Oh, I want to watch this clip. Group. But then... It was just going to be something, 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 dream SMP, something, something, something. I was going to go into Connor's group, but then it was just going to be something, 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 dream SMP, something, something, something. Um, you're a Minecrafter. Yeah, that and sounds then, about right. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You've really, you've really just, you really just violated Connor just then. Can we, can we, can we please, something, can we please something, just... When, when, you're, when, when, something, something, you're scared of your fans, when, when, something, something, Dream SMP, Minecraft. And then I'll please like, stop, okay. please stop violating Connor. He didn't deserve this. I don't get it. <clears throat> okay, let's see what the, the kids are... Defending. No, that's not what they're referring to. On multiple occasions, when Minecraft YouTubers hang out with people outside of their group, they always just pile on them. Haha, <laughs> dream SMP. <laughs> okay, so it's somewhat rare to see people outside their circle actually treat them well. Okay, true. I didn't know about that. <clears throat> I just love how impressed they are with normal, sane human interaction. Because the Minecraft YouTube community is oppressed. <laughs> Thank God. I'm glad they used that sick pinball photo. F'd up my diamond sword, call that breaking edge. Bar and a half. Normal human interaction goes hard in the Minecraft YouTube community. This is the craziest tweet. Yeah. It was, it's interesting, it's very interesting how these, I don't, I feel like, I, I have a lot to say about this, but I don't have any backing material to show, unfortunately, because I'm an unprepared, unprepared slob. So let's instead just look at Morbius. Morbius, Schmorbius, Forbius, Glorbius, Porbius, got some poor in my bias. Man, I wish I was a I wish I was a rapper and I could make fun make funny rhymes on the spot. That'd be so fun. I can make fun of Morbius Florbius. I feel like this is gonna be the shortest podcast episode so far because I literally am running out of topics. This is my last topic. And then I will end it. This will be the shortest one where I spent like five minutes cleaning up my cat's poop off the ground. And then I went to go check on my cat who looks like a lamp. And now we're looking at Morbius Schmorbius. So Morbius, you know I was saying earlier that I watched all the Marvel movies. Still haven't seen Venom 2. I don't, I will watch it, but I will be under the influence because that's how I watched the first one because it was so bad. But this is the one that I really don't want to watch. Well, the thing is I heard it's just, it's just bad. Like, it's not funny bad, it's just bad. And that sucks, because I felt like Venom was, like, funny bad. So let's see. Why is everyone making fun of Morbius? Well, it's because nobody went to go see it. And because it's Jared Leto. And it was also funny the way that they rolled it out. I didn't know anything about this movie until I went to go see The Batman. And there was, like, there was a trailer for it. And it instead of saying, like, Marvel... It said like, it's like they have a new marketing campaign where it's not a Marvel movie. It's like in association with Marvel or something, something like that. Let's see, but, but between an abysmal reception from critics, plenty of, okay, whatever, shut up. Even by the standards of major blockbusters plagued with by delays, please, delays. This movie could not have been saved ever. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the occasion, there was a nearly two-year gap between the release of Morbius's teaser trailer and the first full-length trailer. A gap that's both understandable... True. Did this movie get delayed? For, for two years, all we had of Morbius, a film centered around a Spider-Man villain, villain who had little name recognition outside of comic book fans was a nearly three minute teaser. Who the hell cared about Morbius? The end result, as many reviews pointed it, was not good. Rotten Tomatoes has a film score sitting at 16%. Audience score is at 70%. While the Metacritic score is 36, which means generally unfavorable. One critic called it the worst Marvel superhero movie in a long, long time. Oh, what about Ghost Rider? Oh, I should watch Ghost Rider. Yo, that's the movie I'm watching. 
Ghost Rider was like the panned Marvel movie, while other reviews and reactions highlighted shoddy editing and story choices, a blandness and ham-fisted attempt to tie into a cinematic universe it might never get to play in. Just watch Morbius and gosh the tears in my eyes, the plot, the themes, the characters, dynamics, the drama, the lore, the emotional moments, everything was garbage from the beginning to end. On my way to the hospital, definitely the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I actually thought this was a positive tweet at first. Before its release, the prevailing joke was that Morbius, Morbius had such a non-existent audience that you could just give away tickets. Even some early early screenings showed theaters with fewer few viewers in them. Why can't I read today? Be careful out there, everyone. I had two Morbius tickets in my car. And someone broke in and left four more. <laughs> Morbius is projected to earn 40 million to 50 million in the film's domestic box office opening. Me watching Morbius. One dude in, a, in an empty theater. Morbius fever has gripped the nation. Saw Morbius tonight and there was only one other dude. Took a pic and accidentally had flash on. No. That's definitely him. Desperately need to know the story of the four people seeing Morbius tonight at 10.30 and then elected to sit like this. I mean, you gotta sit with your homies. You don't want to sit with some randos. I mean, not randos, but like, you want to sit with your friends. You don't want to be like at every corner of the theater. I mean, this is a golden opportunity to be in an empty theater, yes. But you want to be with your homies laughing at the movie as it goes. Oh, Jared Leto. Worst DC movie? Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad was the worst. Suicide Squad, when I watched it, I was like, wow, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. And then now he's also in the worst Marvel movie. Good job. Morbius Fever. Morbius Fever is sweeping the nation. Look at that. $352 billion. Good job, Morbius. Morbius getting bad reviews. This was supposed to be the summer of Morbius. The best part of Morbius was when he said, It's Morbin time and morbed all over those guys. That's what I'm saying. Morbius, Schmorbius, Gorbius, Florbius, Forbius, Glorbius, Gorbius, Chorbius, Torbius. You can definitely make a rap with just Morbius. The summer of Morbius has been cancelled. <laughs> A manipulated image placing Martin Scorsese, whose criticism of Marvel movies has drawn the ire of, of for years, in front of a Morbius logo accompanied with a fake quote went viral. But it might have been too good of a Photoshop because the photo made it onto Morbius star Tyrese Gibson's Instagram page. Tyrese thinks Martin Scorsese actually called Morbius the height of cinema is the funniest thing that's happened all week. That's so mean. The response that induced the most eye-rolling among some fans and critics was a Hollywood Reporter column about the critical reception of Morbius. Blah, blah, blah. The column highlights some of the criticism while nothing that he's troubled by the idea that some critics and audience were actively rooting against Morbius because it wasn't released by Disney or directly under the MCU umbrella. Bro. What about Spider-Man? What about Venom? Venom made money, I think. What I find troubling is the number of critics and potential audience members who have been inclined to trash this movie since it was announced, taking to social media to repeatedly voice their disdain at the very concept of a studio other than Disney making a film about a character they're unfamiliar with. Well, I mean, you prove them right. You prove them right with this movie where literally everyone says it's terrible. Newbie's column was quickly ratioed on... You got you gotta love it when ratioed is referenced in an article. When Morbius marketing was highlighted as a reason why people judged the film well before it came out, another was Leto himself. But a more overarching lesson emerged. Marvel movies have such a grasp on popular culture, often to the detriment of most other films and theaters, that Morbius can handle some tough criticism. There's nothing wrong with legitimate concern or not liking a movie, but the reaction to Morbius started months before it even opened. Something Hollywood does not understand and cannot, can't accept, 
Everyone hates Jared Leto, and no one wishes him well. Damn, that's that's harsh. Wow, can't believe Morbius is the first movie ever in all of film history where audiences decided if they wanted to see it based on marketing. True. This is going to happen to every new Jared Leto movie until the end of time. Sorry. Oh, Jared. The thing about the negative reception of Morbius isn't that, at least for viewers, it has anything to Wait, what? It's just not a very good film. Sometimes it's pretty simple. But it also won the domestic box office and made 84 million worldwide. So Morbius is doing just fine. Good for you, Morbius. Morbius, Morbius is doing just fine. Good job, Morbi. Morbius. Oh. Let's go to the Morbius subreddit. Okay, I've seen this one. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. Wait, what? After Morbius, is anyone worried about this movie? No, why? Honestly, I think the movie would have been better if Matt and Jared had swapped roles. Matt is Morbius and Jared is Milo. Wait, are these like legitimate comments? What? I want to see Morbius memes. Bruh. Not that interesting stuff. Morbius memes are not the best around Twitter. I guess. Okay, well. I feel like I have nothing to talk about anymore. Legitimately have nothing to talk about at this point. What else? I was going to say something else. I guess that's it. I didn't get a chance to stream Sekiro yesterday. I usually stream Sekiro on Mondays. And uh, play... And then do the podcast on Tuesdays. Sekiro is really pissing me off though. I can't get past the second boss. I think I've played it for like 4 hours and I still can't beat it. The first part... I can get through, I feel like, kind of easily. Like, I know it. But as soon as he starts shooting electricity at me, I just get wrecked immediately, and I have to go back to the beginning. It's so annoying that you can't just start from the second phase. Honestly, it's so annoying. But yeah. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be the shortest podcast so far, but that's okay. That's okay. Things will happen. My life will be more exciting, I guess, maybe. Maybe I'll do more stuff in my life, have more to talk about. But with that, thank you all for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying my clips. If you haven't already, there's clips on TikTok and and Instagram. I've been posting my stream clips or my podcast clips. and It's been a lot of fun to edit those and to see people liking them. Surprisingly, people seem to really like them on TikTok. So yeah, don't forget to follow me on Twitch, tune in every Tuesday, join the Discord, and watch the YouTube videos. I will get some guests on here soon as well. I just wanted to like see if I can do these podcasts by myself for some time because I want to keep doing this. I don't want to give up and I don't want to rely on my friends. I don't want to rely on other people It's because it's kind of hard to rely on others. Because you don't know how dedicated, they, how in, uh, engaged they are in doing something like this. So, I mean, I would love to have another guest or another co-host. But I just don't know who would be who would be aligned in doing that. So maybe one day, but for now, it's just me and I'll have some guests soon, my friends. So thank you for joining. Please follow me everywhere. Check out the videos. If you didn't watch the whole stream, you can watch the VOD on Twitch or you can watch it on... TikTok, uh, sorry, on YouTube, I post the video on YouTube, like, right now I'm two, I'm like a week behind, no, I'm two weeks behind, because episode two is posted on YouTube now, but this is episode four on Twitch, so I'm two weeks behind on YouTube, and I'll just keep it like that for now, so thanks for joining, this is the end of the podcast, have a good one.